Today we're going to be installing the ultra bright lights in a Model 3. Um, we've done a couple of these videos before, but we're going to refresh it because we now have an MY20 Model 3. Some of the panels are a little different, um, some of the configuration is slightly different. So the technique is still the same, but we just kind of wanted to go over it and cover any of the, the common questions that pop up. Um, today we're going to be installing um, all seven bulbs, so that's what the, the pack would look like. Um, these are all white, uh, as are the footwell bulbs, so we're going to be showing you those as well. Um, but they are available in other colours if you want them, such as red, blue, and purple. There you go. So um, we sell the white lights, which is by far our most popular option as a bundle. Um, you save a little bit of money, about 10% on the, the price buying them individually. But if you want to mix and match, or maybe get some puddle lights for the doors rather than uh, ultra bright lights, then we have a page for that as well. Uh, and we'll link both of them down below. Um, to answer a couple of quick questions, um, the reason we do separate puddle lights is that the way the Model 3 works, it reduces the voltage in the puddle light locations when the car is in park. Um, so depending on the ambient light and whether the car is in park or drive, the lights will either be lit, dimmed or off. Um, but the way it dims is it reduces the voltage. So we had to have bulbs that handle that a little differently to the rest of the locations in Model 3 and S and X where um, they're either on or off. It's a binary thing. Then two more things to note. So um, in our bundle, we also ship these. These are extension cables or pigtails. Um, and they're basically just a male female so we can get that lined up there in focus just a male female cable um, in model 3 doors particularly the newer ones it seems the wiring is very very tight um, to be able to pop the factory bulb out is easy enough but to be able to plug a new one in it's a little tricky um, so just having these on hand just kind of helps alleviate any frustration and makes it a little bit easier um, so we include two of these um, again if you don't want these because you've already checked and you have longer cables which a lot of model 3s do then um, just go to our pick and mix page and just pick what you need but for us it seemed quite important and then the very last thing which we also include in the bundle is a spudger um, i just want to talk about this for one second the purpose of a spudger is that it is um let me find the right word it is oh what's the word it is it'll come to me um oh it'll come to me anyway um, the purpose of the spudger is to lever out all the, all the lights without causing any damage to your trim. Um, every light has, including the factory lights of course, hopefully you can see this if I get it right, but there's a, there's a little recess at one end and that's where you need to dig the spudger in and we'll show you that um, as we pop out each bulb. Um, but the purpose of this is for it to be sacrificial, that was the, the word I was looking for. So this will break before your trim gets damaged. Um, but that said, this is really tough. This is not one of the cheap bendy ones, uh, the orange ones or the pink ones you see on Amazon sometimes. We get a whole set for 20 bucks or 10 bucks. Um, this is the best tool for the job. Um, and also, if you ever buy anything from IKEA, this is great for sliding along the cardboard boxes and breaking over the, open the seal. So, um, really useful. We always have one of these in just about every pen point in the house, but we have 10,000 of them, so that's not too difficult to do. All right, with all of that said, we're going to start um, installing the bulbs in the car. I'll flash a quick graphic now showing where the locations are. Each door in the Model 3 has a single bulb that shines down onto the ground when you open the door. You can either install our ultra bright lights in these locations, which is what we've shown in this video, or you can also install our puddle lights, which shine a projected image onto the ground. Um, the Tesla logo, SpaceX logo, Model 3 logo, and so on. Moving around to the back of the car, um, there are two lights in the trunk, uh, obviously on the inside of the car, that shine inwards to light up the trunk or boot area. Back around the side, so same on this side, just a single bulb in each of the, the door locations shining onto the ground when you open it up. Um, there are no lights that could be upgraded in the front. Um, there's one light in there which is combined with the emergency release button, so that is not upgradable. And then inside the car we have the two footwell locations. These are of different bulb design to accommodate the way the Model 3 dims these locations when the car is in a drive state. And then we have the glove box light which makes the seven regular ultra bright lights and then two footwell lights to complete the package. We're going to start with the doors. Um, the angles are a bit weird but here's the, the factory bulb. 
Um, the very first thing to remember is um, roll down all the windows. Um, the reason we do this is because um, when you pop the bulb out, the car thinks the fuse is blown, it kind of has a little fritz in the door. When you put the new bulb back in, if your window's rolled up, then it'll roll up all the way. And then you'll close your door, it'll hit the trim. It's not pretty. So just make sure you roll down the windows and you're not going to have that problem at all. Um, so to get the factory bulb out, same process for all of them of course. There's a little notch on one end, on this one it's on this front edge. Just really dig the spudger in and then just twist it. And it comes out pretty easy. And you'll see the wire on this is pretty short. Um, so again, using the, the spudger, just release the bulb. There it goes. And then we're going to get one of our bulbs. Um, and since it's so short, so there's things you can do. Okay, so here you can sort of use the spudger to hold the, the plug in place and just about get it into the, the new bulb. But it's a bit inconvenient. So what we're going to do is use an extension um, cable. So we provide two of these, hopefully you won't need more than two per installation. And we could do more with this, we could pull on it a little bit, probably release some slack inside, but I'd rather avoid doing that, at least for the first one. Let's wait and see how desperate we become. So we're just going to slide this on. Gives us an instant extension, and then it's super easy, obviously, just to plug the new bulb in. You'll hear the car beeping inside. That's just it complaining about. It thinks that we've used the manual release on the door. We obviously haven't. And then just pop that back up inside there. And that's pretty straightforward. So we're going to repeat the same thing for all four doors, or the remaining three doors now. All right, here we are on the rear uh, driver's door or left side of the car. Same thing. Um, find the notch, which is on this side, and just dig it in, twist it out. Oof. And then, yeah, pull on the, you can feel some resistance on the, the wire inside the door. It's obviously bound up inside. Um, but, you know, don't be afraid to pull on it just a little bit, but obviously not too much. This one, I'm going to kind of try and keep a hold of while I remove the bulb, just because it's kind of threatening to go back up inside the door. Okay, we're good. So let's pop that off, put one of the bright ones on. I'm going to try and do this without using an extension this time. So you can see, just pull that down, put that on. The car didn't complain that time for some reason. I guess there's no emergency release on the rear doors. And just put that back in place. Okay, onwards. All right, we're on the right side of the car now, on the rear door. So same thing, just put the spudger in there, dig it in, and just give it a little twist, pop the bulb out plenty of slack on this one so again using the spudger just sort of tuck it in between the plug and the, the factory bulb and that releases the little clip inside and then we're going to grab one of our bulbs just slide that on and then push that back up in the opening okay just the front right door to do. Last of the doors. Um, good reminder this bulb's actually gone out so Model 3 turns off the door. Um, puddle lights after I guess five minutes maybe a little less so don't be alarmed if they go out while you're installing them. Um, this door has one of our test bulbs in it so it already has an extension cable on it. But we're going to release that. Put the white one on. Oop, oh no that's a that's a dim old factory bulb, hold on. Get the right one. There we go. Car complains again, but it's all good because we have the windows rolled down. No chance of any accidents. Push it up in there. And now we'll move on to the trunk or boot. So we're in the trunk now, or boot, if you're from the UK and maybe Australia. Um, so we have two in the in the trunk. Um, if you only buy two bulbs, these are the ones to buy because the lighting in the trunk is particularly weedy for what's needed. Um, and depending on your the vintage of your Model 3, you may or may not have an extra trim piece running across the top of the um, trunk. 
which actually stops just before the, the bulbs anyway. So it doesn't make a lot of difference. This trim piece actually makes it um, just kind of contains the, the trim, which is this very floppy um, loose material anyway. But to pop the bulb out, you're going to get used to this now, but same thing, just get under there. You'll see that there's a, a clip inside. Let's pull that through. Um, it's not needed. So it's actually kind of a pain to get it back on the bulb. So we're going to leave it off for now, grab one of our bulbs, put that on, and see how much brighter that is, and just tuck that up in there. Um, it's going absolutely nowhere. If you really want to frustrate yourself, feel free to snap this back on. To do that, you need to remove this trim piece so you can kind of pull this liner out and then get your hands behind the bulb. Um, but again, it's absolutely not necessary. This isn't going anywhere. So let's flip over to the other side. Same kind of thing, just going to get the spudger in here, give it a twist. Again, don't be shy with it, just kind of keep digging away until it releases. Oops, I think I've got it. There we go. Pop that out, release the power, um, rescue the, the little black plastic piece just so it's not knocking around inside your car and then just replace the bulb very easily. Just put that back on. Pop it back in. Again, not going anywhere. Just keeps it real simple and easy. So we've done six of the seven bulbs. The last one is in the glove box. Okay, now we're gonna do the glove box real quick. Let's open that up. Um, let me flick the camera around. Hopefully you can see that. It might be a little out of focus. It's a difficult um, bulb to get to. So really treat this as a bonus bulb. Um, the glove box is so small you can well, barely get a pair of gloves in here. So I'm not convinced you really need to upgrade this bulb. Um, but to do so, um, the ones in the hard trim are always a little bit more tricky. Um, so this one is one of those. But you do still do the same thing. Kind of dig the spudger in underneath the end and then twist it comes out. Um, again, use the spudger. I don't know how much of a close-up you're getting on this, and it's probably not in focus, but let's try. Just kind of pop that in there, and that releases it. And then plug the replacement bulb in. Sorry if this is all fingers and thumbs. I'm trying to do it backwards, which... And there we go. The um, passenger or bright side footwell at the moment. As I mentioned before, any of the bulbs that are in um, a, a, a hard or rigid trim are a little bit more difficult to get out. So again, this is one of those. You see the notch on the left side. So dig the spudger in and twist it out. Um, it does take a bit of determination sometimes. We get probably one email a week saying, well, the footwell lights don't come out. Um, I can assure you they do. Tests haven't changed these in eight years. They're probably not about to, but either way, they, they do come out. Just use a bit of um, determination with them. Let me make sure I've got the right one. I do. So that's the other important thing to note. If you use our regular bulbs in this location, they're not going to work reliably. You do need to use the footwell ones. They're just as bright. They just accommodate the dimming behavior that Model 3 has for the footwell locations. Okay, then over to the driver's side, which is a little bit more annoying just because of the pedals and steering wheel being in the way. All right, so the driver's side location is our last one to take care of. Um, Look for the little notch. I think it's over this side, but I'm going to try and just go from this side anyway, just so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Dig in, twist, and out comes the bulb. Not much spare cable on this one, of course. 
just to make it even more annoying than it already is. Release that one. And there's a new one. And then just snap it back in, which is actually quite difficult. There we go. There we go. And there you go. That's how you replace seven bulbs in a Model 3 plus two footwells.